Hi everybody. Um, back to our YouTube and our Smith charts again. Last time we talking about the uh, reflection coefficient of our transmission line when we uh, connect uh, the load impedance to our transmission line we should have characteristic impedance to be Z0 okay we can fire your tau L at the load N here to be ZL minus Z0 and then uh, divided by ZL plus Z0 and uh, you take a look again at uh, for the case of matching transmission line you have ZL equal to Z0 and that's give you tau L to be 0 in that case when you are plot your normalized load impedance which is going to be equal to ZL because your load impedance is going to be equal to your characteristic impedance of the transmission line so uh, this is become uh, 1 on the Smith chart, you plot um, this is ZL equal to R plus RJX, the real part plus the imaginary part. So what we have here is we have our the circuit which has number 1.0 on the transmission line here. And you notice that the reflection coefficient vector is just like the same point as the center of the Smith chart. So you can see that uh, the length of the reflection coefficient vector is going to be zero and that's give you uh, the reflection coefficient to be zero so that's perfect match when you calculate by hand and uh, using this equation and also uh, you plot uh, normalized load impedance on transmission line okay so that's just uh, reveal a little bit of uh, what we left over from the last time now uh, we get into more uh, uh, complicated problems and uh, if you take a look at the some uh, example this is the I'm not going to talk about the uh, hand calculation of the transmission line here. but we will uh, move to the how to use the Smith chart to solve the transmission line problems okay and I will get back to uh, more detail of the transmission line again now let's pick up some uh, problem here okay this example let's talk about where you have the input um, impedance to be 20 plus 40 J ohms and load impedance to be ZL plus equal to 20 plus 40 J ohm and characteristic um, impedance or Z0 become 100 ohms and uh, the signal velocity in the transmission line U equal to 250 mil meter per microsecond at the frequency of 30 megahertz uh, ask you to find the length of the this transmission line okay so uh, we will work more on the smith chart here the first step that you're going to do is since they give you uh, input impedance of the transmission line and your load impedance of the transmission line and also characteristic impedance Z0 of the transmission line how do you find uh, the length of the transmission line? it's the same thing that um, I just give you uh, the rough idea about when you are let's say when uh, the length of the transmission line given and you connect your load impedance to uh, the transmission line here 
and then uh, this is characteristic impedance to be Z0 and uh, you give you the length of the transmission line in the term of uh, how many uh, times up or in the ratio or in the ratio of uh, lambda and you can find the input impedance of the whole system here what I mean the whole system is mean uh, you have the transmission line and also the load impedance okay basically uh, you can start by uh, find the ZL normalized the same thing that you did before in the uh, Smitsha tutoring series 1 when you fire ZL normalized, you have like the real part R plus imaginary part plus JX, and you uh, plot ZL normalized on the Smith chart. Okay, what I show you is here. For example, if you plot ZL normalized uh, to be here at this point and you are looking for the input impedance of the whole system here what you need to do you need to go to our smith chart um let's see your okay i'll blow this up take a look at this one here this is the you move any uh, load impedance normalized load impedance you probably have to move you know the point for example you have ZL right here and what you need to do you need to uh, uh, rotate this point when you have a reference point at the center of the Smith chart right here and you choose the compass Okay, so you're wondering, you are supposed to move rotates, uh, ZL normalized to a direction of a counterclockwise, or this one, or clockwise. Well, this give you or on the Smith chart give you idea uh, what direction you supposed to rotate, uh, ZL normalized. This one's here, counterclockwise, wavelength toward generator. Generator is just like its source. So in this case, you have uh, ZL. And then uh, you want to find the whole, uh, the input impedance of the whole system. So you need to move, you know, from the right to the left. So that means you move the wavelength they call this one of the red wavelength toward generator uh, generator is just like the source you have like Vsauce here so in this case if you want to find the input impedance of the whole system you have to move to rotate ZL uh, in the direction of clockwise so uh, what case that you have to rotate ZL normalize in the uh, direction of uh, counterclockwise like this one now you take a look at the okay the meaning of the wavelength toward load in this case uh, I'm going to talk to uh, the other case in case you know the input impedance of the whole system here and you want to find your ZL when you know Z0 what you can do is that you have to move from uh, the wavelength toward load and that's how you find ZL okay so the first thing you need to do you need to plot Z and normalize and you rotate you know this point when uh, you take uh, the center of the smith chart to be as the reference point 
you rotate in the direction of uh, counterclockwise. For how many degree, how many lambda? Well, you need to find the length of the line here in the term of how many lambda here. So you can move and finally the final um, point that you get is going to be your ZL normalized. So this is the rough idea of how to use how to rotate um, you know whatever you know Z in normalized or Z out normalized okay so back to back to the problem here let's see um okay I'll back go to our Smith chart here so what they're asking is like they give you a input impedance and they give you the load impedance they give you the characteristic impedance Z0 of course you can fire Z normalized and also you can find ZL normalized to plot on the Smith chart okay so the first step that we're going to see or let's take a look at this one here what we're going to do is like this is on the Smith chart here for example if you plot our ZR normalized Z normalized at this point and if you have ZL normalized at this point how do you find the length of the line this is the reference point. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to draw a line here, and you get what do you call our lambda L, and this is your lambda in, right? This is the beginning of the line, and this is the end of the line here, lambda L. So what you do? Uh, which one is going to be your lambda? you know that you have reference point lambda L and you have reference point lambda in you take a look at this quick as I mentioned before if you want to find your if you have ZL sorry for my drawing here and if you want to find the input impedance of the whole system you have to move uh, the normalized load impedance on the Smith chart you have to rotate in what direction I mentioned that to you before you need to rotate uh, in the direction of clockwise reference toward generator okay so back to uh, the Smith chart here. So that's what it mean in there you have like ZL normalized. You need to rotate in the direction of clockwise until you get uh, for how many lambda is depend on the length of your transmission line here. And in this case that's what they are asking you. You need to find L in the term of lambda. So what you need to do, you need to find this is your lambda. So make sure you get the right lambda here from this point to this point. You're not gonna take into account of uh, from this point to this point. Okay. So uh, the f what I did is the first thing I, uh, I did. I'm looking for uh, input normalize input impedance so I simply divide 20 minus 40 J divided by 100 so this is the characteristic impedance so I got like 0 0.2 minus 0 0.4 J and also I fire normalized load impedance so I simply divide 20 plus 40 J divided by 100 I get like 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 J okay and then you need to plot uh, Z normalize and ZL normalize on the Smith chart, and you find 
the reference uh, lambda point let's say that so for Zn I get like is at the position of 0 0.435 lambda and for load normalized load impedance I got the reference point to be at 0 0.0 0 0.062 lambda okay and then uh, okay just think about it the first thing what I'm going to show it to you is how to plot Z anomalized on the smith chart this is become 0 0.2 minus 0 0.4 J I probably have uh, already plot on the smith chart here so take a look at this one this is the normalized become 0 0.2 minus 0 0.4 J okay where is my 0 0.2 this is my 0 0.2 the circle has the number of 0 0.2 on it so what I did is you know I draw the I pick up the circle here this is the represent 0 0.2 the real part and what about negative 0 0.4 this is a uh, represent the imaginary part of the normalized input impedance so what I have is I have 0 0.4 here and as I told you before um, you have like upper part for imaginary part the upper part is represent the positive number of imaginary part and the lower part is represent the negative or uh, number of imaginary part so I have like negative 0 0.4 I need to pick up 0 0.4 right here and what I have is I have a lie here so you have intercept between two point that's why I show you this is the normalized input imp impedance is come at this point the same thing as the load impedance normalized load impedance as you calculate to be a 0 0.2 plus j 0 0.4 but this one is become a positive imaginary part same thing you pick up the circle 0 0.2 is become this line here or this circle here and you also pick up our imaginary part 0 0.4 so I pick up this line here so it's intercept both between the real part and imaginary part and finally I get ZR normalized right here and you you also draw the line from the center of the circle here and cut through or lambda whatever and you read the number out so what this one you take a look at here this show you lambda all right to be 0 0.062 lambda this is 0 0.06 and this is 0 0.07 and you have like 0 0.002 or lambda per division and here from 0 0.06 to 0 0.07 you have five divisions so I approx approximate this one to be your uh, only one uh, division so I add up this becomes 0 0.02 and the same thing as the normalized input impedance you take a look at this one here this is 0 0.02 for three this is 0 0.44 and I uh, I just pick up let's take this point is about uh, maybe I did something wrong here just not really good actually uh, let's just get some idea okay so but this is actually supposed to be what you have one how many division one two three four so it's about uh, four division and one division is represents 0 0.002 so this is supposed to be uh, eight correct 
and now it's just like I told you before to find um the length of the transmission line okay you have ZL right here and you have Z0 right here what you need to do is you need to rotate ZL in the direction of uh, clockwise so when you have ZL right here you need to rotate clockwise so it's become you know just like the red line here so your lambda actually is just the length you know of the red line here so you gotta be careful you know how to read your the length of the transmission line to be how many how many lambda okay so that's another problem but you have to to be careful about to read and if you find the length of you know this line the red line you can find the length of the line in the term of lambda to be how many lambda okay so this is like 0 0.02 lambda and this is 0 0.4 uh, 3.5 or 3.8 lambda now uh, let's take a look together you can do or uh, there are many ways to do that okay um sometimes you can take a look to be straight when you take a look outside here this is lambda start from zero and it's move you know um for the half circle it's end up with zero point two five lambda Or what you can do is you can uh, um, take a look uh, um, right here. This is 0 0.25, and back to the other circle, you end up at 0 0.5 lambda. So what you can do is like you can think about take the whole, th you know circle or 2 pi you know but actually this give you a 0 0.5 lambda but the length of the line just start from here and end up at this point so you need to subtract 0 0.5 by what by this one and this is since this one start from 0 as it's end up with 0 0.0 to 6 lambda you simply uh, subtract 0 0.062 lambda you know from 0 0.5 lambda but you're not finished yet you also need to subtract you know the length or 0 0.5 lambda from this length also so uh, this part is become how many lambda well this one is 0 0.5 lambda and this one is 0 0.5 Four, three, five lambda. What you can do, you can also subtract from zero point five lambda minus zero point zero. Oops, sorry, zero four three five lambda. Correct. So this this is the straightforward, and you cannot make any mistake so this become your lambda just be careful when you read uh, the length of the line okay so you probably get some idea about this already and then uh, we get back to the what I left behind here so uh, finally I got uh, the length of the line to be uh, 0 0.373 lambda well why I did why I subtract 0 0.435 from 0 0.062 take a look at this chart again 
since the number here start from 0 and you have this point to be 0 0.062 lambda and this point to be uh, 0 0.435 so the length of the transmission line you can uh, also subtract you know 0 0.435 lambda from 0 0.062 lambda okay so this is become uh, the length of the transmission line but sometimes they won't answer in the term of meter and you need to find lambda what is lambda from the equation v equal to f lambda you can find lambda in the term of meter to be here. the velocity of the signal divided by the frequency of the, your signal and they are given yes just like this one here you have L to be 0 0.373 lambda and then your lambda become V over F and V if given to be your 250 uh, 10 to the 6 meter per second and your frequency is like 30 gigahertz so it's become 30 multiplied by 10 to the 6 Hertz and that's give you the length of the line to be 3.11 meter okay this is one of example of the how to apply smith chart to transmission light problem now or uh, you take a look at take a look back at the uh, transmission layer again sometimes they ask you you have uh, your ZL right here and you have Z0 this is just pop up to my mind just uh, show you uh, how to use the smith chart and to make you m more understand about a smith chart what about if I ask you what if the length of the line is the equal to uh, lambda over 2 or 0 0.5 lambda can somebody tell me what is the input impedance of the line here I don't care what Z0 is going to be I don't care what Z0 is going to be but I'm just asking you uh, if the length of the line is become uh, 0 0.5 lambda what is the Z input of the transmission line here okay let's take a look as I told you before okay this is your transmission line oops this is your symmetry When you uh, take a look at lambda, it start from here to be zero, and you move around here, it's become zero point two five, correct? This is your zero, this is your zero point two five. So you back here again, it's become zero point five lambda, and also this is zero point four nine, and is become uh, 0 0.5 at this point as well again I'm asking you uh, if the length of the transmission line becomes 0 0.5 lambda what is the input impedance of the transi transmission line system here okay well you take a look at this one here your ZL well, the first thing you want to find here, the input impedance 
we start from the first step you need to find ZL normalized so you simply divide your ZL by ZL uh, sorry Z0 okay for example I got your my uh, ZL normalized here So what you need to do, you need to uh, rotate your ZL normalized uh, clockwise from the load to the source or wavelength toward generator. So this gives you uh, the rotation direction here. And this is your reference point. So I simply draw, cut through this one here. This means you need to rotate, you know, uh, you are ZL normalized in the direction of clockwise for how much? How many lambda? Well, you need to rotate for a 0 0.5 lambda. And you know, 0 0.5 lambda is just one circle. Oh, say one period. So what happened? What happened is that it doesn't matter when you rotate here for 0 0.5 lambda. It's come back to the same point. So your input impedance is simply equal to uh, your load impedance. Okay, so this is give you another idea about what happened. Because uh, one circle is just like one period and that's equivalent to uh, 0 0.5 lambda or the half of the wavelength And now you know the same thing. If uh, your the length of the line to be 0 0.5 lambda, your input impedance is going to be equal to uh, the load impedance, whatever connect connected to the load end of the transmission line. Same thing as one. Same thing as 1.5. Same as the 2.0. So it's become a uh, what? It's become uh, the multiplication of zero by five lambda. That will give you uh, the input impedance to be uh, the same as the load impedance. Where n is what? It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Okay, so uh, this is the what we get from the speed chart again. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. As you were Let's give you uh, the transmission line with the length 10 meter and fill up with dielectric with epsilon r or relative permittivity to be 2.25 and mu r equal to 1 and then uh, with the signal uh, come with frequency 34 megahertz and the load impedance is 50 plus 100 j ohms and characteristic impedance R0 or Z0 equal to 50 ohms. Um, find the input impedance of the transmission line. So it's going to be the same thing if you can start from here. You have a transmission line and then connect load impedance to the transmission line. And this is your load impedance here. And your characteristic impedance of the transmission line to be your 50 ohms ask you to find input impedance. We do the same thing. We start for by uh, um, look for ZL normalize. You plot on the Smith chart here and then uh, you rotate the ZL normalized clockwise for 1.70 lambda and you find input impedance here okay
so this is the direction of rotation here well um, the way your I we did here we need to find the length of the line is the term of how many lambda so uh, we start by our uh, phi lambda first lambda equal to uh, the velocity of the signal and divide by frequency so it's end up to be 5.882 meter and then uh, the length of the line is 10 meter so you find L 10 meters in the term of lambda so you divide 10 by 5.882 meter and this end up is give you the number to be 1.7 lambda so uh, this is what you need to do is you need to rotate the normalized load impedance co uh, clockwise for 101.7 lambda as I told you before that when you're talking about a 1.7 uh, uh, lambda for one ro one circle rotation you have like 0 0.5 lambda so you split 1.70 lambda to be uh, 1.5 lambda plus 0 0.2 lambda so this is what you need to do you simply rotate load normal like load impedance for 0 0.2 lambda only okay um let's take a look at the normalized load impedance so you divide 50 plus 100 j uh, this is zero given by your characteristic impedance which is the 50 ohms you have zero to be 1 plus 2j omega and then uh, you don't need to rotate normalized load impedance for 1.7 lambda you just uh, rotate only 2.0.2 .2 lambda and this part I don't have like smith chart to show you on my lectures but if you go to uh, the smith chart just take a look at normalized load impedance 1 plus 2 J so what you need to do is you're looking for R to be 1 ZL normalized is 1 plus 2 J so this is the circle 1.0 and then you look for the positive uh, 2 so it's going to be upper half of your smith chart here this is your 2.0 so you find the line here and intercept with the 1.0 cell curve so you get your CR0 here sorry uh, normalized load impedance here and then uh, you need to rotate this one for uh, 0 0.2 lambda you know wherever is you know you have this one is going to be your your input impedance of the transmission line here and you can read you know from the plot which is not so difficult to read okay uh, you can check with um your uh, from here you have um, Z normalized to be 0 0.29 minus 0 0.82 J right. and then you want to find input impedance in the term of ohms this one is have no unit so you simply multiply Z normalize with uh, characteristic impedance because you know that Z normalize is equal to uh, Z in in the unit of ohms divided by uh, characteristic impedance or Z zero. Okay, so you simply multiply fifty by whatever you have here normalized input impedance so the final solution is going to be 14.5 minus 41j you can you know double check by doing by your own uh, smith chart 
as I told you before you have 1.7 lambda you don't need to uh, rotate for 1.7 lambda because you can split 1.7 to be uh, 1.5 plus 0 0.2 lambda because this is one uh, period when you rotate around one circle it's come back to the same you know point okay if I are uh, back to uh, transmission line equation you also uh, be able to calculate for the uh, input impedance of the transmission line uh, using our uh, equation that we derived before is going to be uh, helpful for you to be able to check with your uh, calculation here so your z in here for by hand calculation you can uh, calculate equal to z0 multiplied by z uh, load impedance plus characteristic impedance multiplied by hyperbolic tan gamma L minus Z divided by Z0 plus ZL uh, hyperbolic tan gamma L uh, minus Z where your gamma equal to alpha plus J beta and uh, in this case you uh, don't have alpha because you're conductivity is equal to zero so you have left over beta which is beta become uh, 2 pi over lambda here which I explained in uh, the series of transmission line uh, basic transmission line this is a hand calculation but in this part I'm just talking about the Smith chart how to ap apply the Smith chart to solve transmission line problems when you take a look at this one, hyperbolic tan or just quick hyperbolic tan of uh, your gamma it just become J beta here. So this term er okay, you multiply by er L minus Z. And take a look at this term, hyperbolic tan of the complex number is simply become er J and just function tan and then beta and if you want to find the uh, input impedance is at the source n so you are use z to be zero and then this simply is end up to be uh, tan beta l and your beta become uh, 2 pi over lambda and then L in this case is 1.7 um, lambda here so you can uh, check your number the final number Z in compared to whatever you are use this measure just right here Well, the next um, Smith chart video, I'm going to talk about uh, transmission line matching, and I don't think I have enough, you know, memory. I mean, uh, this limit to uh, to uh, gigabyte, so it's almost hit the maximum limit. So I w I, w I would like to stop, you know. Uh, this lecture um, the Smith chart series 2 you know just right here okay see you in the next uh, YouTube